Hi guys, I'm Brad Montgomery and welcome to The Breakdown. And here we talk about finance, psychology, as well as meteorology. Today we're going to be talking all things cryptocurrency and seeing where the market is right now and kind of where it may be headed as we go into the future. Before we get started, if you missed any of our episodes, you can always go to keepboxtv.com forward slash the hyphen breakdown. Now let's break it down. And I'm here with JJ, crypto advisor, and basically JJ, he's saying just how well he can kind of break things down to where everybody can understand it, which is something we love here on The Breakdown, and we're going to get right into it. And, you know, you and I were talking earlier about cryptocurrency and kind of thinking, you know, what is the definition of cryptocurrency or what is it? But you brought up even a better point is, you know, why was there a need? Why was it created in the first place? And, and how did it come about? You want to go into that? Sure. Um, I think a lot of people wonder about cryptocurrency and they all, they always want to know what's the best one to get into and what's this. But we have to go back and remember why was cryptocurrency even invented in the first place. And the first one that was invented <clears throat> that actually worked was Bitcoin. And Bitcoin was made because it was trying to solve a financial crisis in the world. We live in a world where the monetary policies of countries is just getting out of hand. You know, the the government collects taxes and even then they can't run, uh, they can't operate on that. They have to print money. And I think a lot of people need to understand like cryptocurrency, sometimes people say is, they think it's here to like, to ruin the dollar or ruin, <clears throat> excuse me, ruin any uh, fiat currency. Um, and that's not really what it is. It was actually, the whole point that it was created was to try to fix a ruined fiat currency. And that, and what, when you're, when was it about, when did it come about? And so was the Bitcoin creator or creators, as we know, they, the pseudonym that they went by was Satoshi Nakamoto. Okay. <clears throat> Satoshi Nakamoto was either a person or a group of people along with other people who helped, uh, open source code, a software, uh, cryptographic algorithms to a monetary digital currency. Okay. So that's how it started. And you've been, you've been using it. When did you first stumble across it? I guess you've been so, familiar with it. Um, I really fell in love with Bitcoin after I was told about it by, I have two cousins. One of them is a CPA <clears throat> and another one is a, he worked at Goldman Sachs. Okay. And I remember one family vacation, we were there and they were like, Hey, you should look into this thing called Bitcoin. And, and we just bought some and it went up in value and it was all speculative back then. Right. And so I was like, huh, that's interesting. I'll, I'll go look into it. And I didn't for a while. Right. And that was like 800 or something at that. Time. I don't know. I don't really remember how long, like, all I know is that when I finally looked into it, I was like, this is interesting. And I was kind of like, oh, huh. you know, when you go and we've all been on vacation, right? And then you go to vacation and say you go out snorkeling. I, there's always those people who you see that they're like all the tourists that don't want to get in the water because oh, yeah. they're like, oh, I see the reef. It's pretty cool. That's all, you know? Mm -hmm. And then there's the ones that get in and they're in their life jackets and they're looking, you know, from 20 feet above. Right. And then there's the ones that break the rules, take off the life jacket and start diving down. And then they get down into the reef and then they're like, wow. Wow you start seeing things in there that you didn't see from the boat, right. you know, you start seeing the, the anemones and the seahorses and the caves and the every, that's kind of what happened with me with Bitcoin. Okay. I went down the rabbit hole and then it you taught me, it. I loved it. And it taught me more about cryptocurrency in general and how amazing the blockchain is. Okay. It is, it's, it's one of the, it might be the eighth wonder of the world. <laughs> so, and and I guess Bitcoin was the first. Yes. And, and how many are there now? Kind of oh, geez. Probably around 10,000 wow. or more. Okay. Um, I honestly didn't, haven't looked that up, but last time I was reading an article, I remember they were mentioning somewhere around 10,700-ish cryptocurrencies. And the reason there is, is because people can copy a cryptocurrency and make another one. So there's a lot of forfeiting going on. You know, a lot of people, <clears throat> um, 
I didn't know about that. Yeah, a lot of people get scammed by a lot of those things because they think, oh, this is a new one, it's better, but all they know, they don't know that that was just like a copy and paste version of the prior cryptocurrency. Like, for example, Bitcoin. Bitcoin was made, and through the years, a lot of people started saying, well, we don't want the block size to be this big, and we want the blocks to be faster than every 10 minutes, and we want this and we want that. So they, and you can do this, you can literally copy the Bitcoin software and you can rename it to something else you know one of the first ones that they did was litecoin litecoin was a copy and paste of bitcoin and the people who didn't like <clears throat> part of the bitcoin network because they thought it was too slow so they wanted it to be faster so they made it they changed the software just a little bit to where litecoin is where the blocks are four times faster okay the supply is four times as many and so on and so forth. And that's happened a lot with a lot of cryptocurrencies. And that's why there's so many today. That's why it's a dangerous thing to be in, to get into without realizing most of these are rug pulls. They're scam coins. They're they're out to trick you and steal your money. Interesting. Scan never heard that. I mean, they're not heard that term. Before. Well, the real term is uh, sh coin. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting, right? That's what a lot of more, you know. So... So those are the kind of the obviously that's the bad side of it. That was the bad side. The good, the good. What are some of the more Bitcoin's obviously very successful as far as crypto. Goes. Yes. What are some of the other more successful? Um. So the bad side of crypto, it, to to put it into terms where people could understand, is like <clears throat> when I was younger, I went and I did a service mission for my church. I was gone for two years, and when I was gone, the internet came out. I had no idea what the internet was. I actually came back to school. And I went to my first uh, year in college and my English teacher was telling us we needed to write a research paper. So I went in there thinking, okay, this is easy. And then I remember she would always say, and if you need more information, go to the World Wide Web over and over and over. And I'd be like, the heck, this World Wide Web book has a lot of information. I'm just, why am I gonna go waste my time with all this? I'll just go get it from there. So I literally went to the library and went to the book sections and started looking for the W, and I looked for the World Wide Web book. Right. I did literally, that's what I did. And I finally went to the front desk, and the, they're like, uh, that's not a book, that's the internet. And I was like, the what? Anyways, long story short, the dot coms. Mm -hmm. The internet was made, and the internet brought a lot of dot coms. And we all know what the dot com era was. Uh, it was a bubble and it popped and it popped back. Well, I think a good way to put cryptocurrency and Bitcoin is like we have an internet, but we've never had an internet money. We have Bitcoin, which is like an internet for money. Mm -hmm. It's completely decentralized. The creators are anonymous. Um, there was no pre sale, there was no ICO, there was it was a fair launch. Whoever wanted it could buy it. And so that network created something that people liked. And now there's cryptocurrencies that are starting to come out that are just kind of like .coms. Not saying that they're all bad. There are some great ones. So like Bitcoin is probably like the internet of money. Okay. It is the, a network of trust that people can send peer-to-peer -peer not just transactions, peer-to-peer -peer information, peer-to-peer -peer, uh, whatever you want it to be over a trusted network that is not controlled by a central bank or a government. And cryptocurrencies are like dot-coms. There is a lot of really good dot-coms that are out now today. A lot of them came from nothing, like Amazon. Um, Amazon is kind of like an Ethereum. You know, Ethereum is a place where a lot of people can build a decentralized app that can do a use case for anything in life. Okay. You know, like you go to your Apple or your Google uh, Play books or whatever, and you download an app, mm -hmm. that app is centralized. Right. So if I create an app, a weather app, mm -hmm. and it's a weather app, and my weather app takes off, Google takes 40%. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know exactly how much Android takes, but I'm pretty sure it's around the same. Well, a decentralized app is where you can build an app that's not on a centralized network. It's on a decentralized network to where if you make the money, you keep those rewards. And where if you're an investor in that, you keep those rewards. So that's kind of how I would 
a term, you know, the difference between Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. And th then what, what are, and that kind of circles back to what, what do, and then I'm, I'm actually curious about this because you do, you do know more about it. What do mainstream institutions think of this whole thing? I mean, because obviously it's got to be bumping up against well, there. <laughs> so in the beginning, um, <clears throat> we have to start with Bitcoin because that was the original thing that people started getting worried about and let's be honest governments didn't like it because that it's a threat to their currency you know bitcoin is like the central bank the central bank is a uh, is basically it bails out the government so the government will bail itself out whenever it runs out of revenue we pay taxes and those taxes are made they're to run the government but the government runs out what do they do hey central bank we need more money so they print it so I think a lot of the things with Bitcoin is it's the most disciplined central bank on the internet. Okay. Because Bit Bitcoin, you can't print more. Right. And everyone knows this. There's 21 billion. There will never be more. There will be more for someone who takes the Bitcoin software and makes another one. You know, so like Litecoin. Like people. Litecoin will have uh, 84 million. Bitcoin has 21. And so on and so forth. So Bitcoin is finite. So you've got, you can, some people copy the program, make a new coin that's legitimate. And then you also have so like that are made that are scam that'll just eat your money as well. Right? Yes. Like Sam Bankman Fried, <laughs> they made one called the FTX token and its ticker was FTT. Um, that's one of the downsides about some cryptos. Unfortunately, the truth needs to be told, but like Ethereum has great, it, Ethereum is like the dot coms. It wants to do good things, and there are some good things that will come and have come from the Ethereum blockchain. Mm -hmm. But we have to be honest, there's a lot of scam coins that have come from the Ethereum blockchain or the Binance smart chain or the other smart chain because me and you could create a cryptocurrency using the Ethereum blockchain. Yeah. The Ethereum network is basically, like I said, you can make decentralized apps. Well, we could make a cryptocurrency on the Ethereum blockchain. Yeah. Okay, we could call it the breakdown coin. Right. So if if your podcast gets a lot of views and people think you're popular, they can buy the breakdown coin, right? Right. right. And as soon as it gets really high, guess what we're going to do? Because we were the er early investors. We're going to yeah. sell it, rug pull everybody. Yeah. It crashes. We walk out millionaires and they all lose their money. Right. And those coins are made on the Ethereum blockchain. Interesting. So Ethereum is a good thing, but it's also caused a lot of bad things in the cryptocurrency markets. I remember, it's like you mentioned one thing that was that kind of triggered a memory. Um, what happened with Binance? Binance is good. Um, they, they I think like, you mean like, FTX. Well, I'm making free. Well, but this is like about a year ago. I think, I don't know if they were hacked or something, but I remember hearing like um, people talking about if you have a Binance account, you may want to do some security. Things. Yes, and a lot of the, a lot of those uh, those are called decentralized exchanges. Okay. Oh, exchange. it's where you can it's where you can go to buy cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. um, like the U.S. dollar is the world reserve currency mm -hmm. for the world. I think 140 countries have their own currency, and then there's like 40 plus that use the U.S. dollar. Yep. Okay. Crazy. So in the cryptocurrency world. Bitcoin is like the world reserve currency. And so in order for somebody to invest or buy s different cryptocurrencies, it used to only be able to be done using Bitcoin. So if you wanted to go That's buy... Right. exchange. That's right. So if you wanted to go buy the FTT token, because you see FTX is taking off, right? Mm -hmm. So you go to a, an exchange like Binance, and Binance will let you buy the FTT token, but in order to buy that, you have to sell your Bitcoin to Binance. Mm -hmm. So that's why when there's a lot of crashes, Bitcoin is hurt because Bitcoin doesn't have anyone to bail it out. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, finance issues is why I like to see it fall. So like uh, like like um like Sam Bankman Fried for FTX, he started that company and that company just what took off. Yeah. It was a modern day digital Bernie Madoff. Okay. So what he did is he started the FTX company. They created the FTT token, which was, it was called the FTX token, but the ticker symbol was FTT. And the FTT, they were using that and they were leveraging it with the, the parent company of FTX, which Sam Bankman-Fried also basically 
was running. It was called Alameda Research. So Alameda Research was leveraging FTT tokens for real U.S. dollars. And we're talking billions of U.S. dollars. And so when people started... The thing with Bitcoin, and this is what's interesting about Bitcoin, is it's a public ledger. Okay. Governments should love Bitcoin because Bitcoin is a public ledger. And so people were starting to notice some very strange things happening with uh, FTX's Bitcoin and the stuff like that would happen. And so they started like the news started spreading and pretty soon people started like, oh, crap, I'm going to sell my FTT token now back to Bitcoin, but guess what? It wasn't new. Yeah, and that, and that was literally in the news not that long ago. So what happened? He ended up going to jail. He's, I think he's going to be in jail for a while. Yeah. Yeah, he he, def, he he knew what he was doing. They were living the high life. They were spending millions and millions of dollars a month treating their employees, parties, everything. It was, it was like I said, it was a modern day. Oh, yeah, for sure. And you know what? It's really sad because it, it, a lot of people lost a lot of money. And, you know, a lot of people have a sour taste of crypto in their mouth. Like, they, they're like, I don't want to get into crypto, you know? I heard about FTX. And I've ta- I talked to a lot of people that I help, and they, they're they like, it's too, it's too dangerous, too dangerous. But I think if you stick with the core, uh, the core, networks bitcoin for example you're gonna be fine like the name brand yes like i said bitcoin there have been hacks on bitcoin in the past that people have done but they've recuperated them because it's a public ledger you can see where everything's going every address is tied to an ip address you you eventually you'll get caught if you steal if i steal your bitcoin and then i try to spend it they will catch you i mean they will catch me because i have to use an internet right they know, oh, there it went. That was the address where that Bitcoin was, and now it just went to another address. This is the IP address. Boom, busted. So, and that that's that's interesting. Now, now on my, with this, the Bankman Freed thing, okay, I want to take it a little bit broader. Yeah. Because um, there was a big, just crypto crash. Huge. What what happened? Like I said, they sold, they were selling off all the Bitcoin. So they could sell off? Yeah. That's how they were trying to cover, recover their losses, and they couldn't keep up. Well, not not, not just in uh, FTX, but just in general, because Bitcoin was so, sixty to seventy thousand. Was it top of eighty something, or what was it? It went down like seventy eight percent. Okay. In the last bull run, so we hit sixty seven, and then we went down to fifteen thousand six hundred and fifty. And it's <clears throat> the crash is caused by those things, but people get scared. You know, it's just like the stock market. When things are bad, people get scared. You know, a lot of people pull out and they, they sell, they, they panic, you know. Um, that's why I think Bitcoin gets uh, gets the, of all the things that happen in the cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin always is the one that holds it together. Right. If you really think about it, if Bitcoin crashes, everything crashes. If Bitcoin goes up, everything starts going up. Bitcoin is the decentralized cryptocurrency. It's the the it's like I said, the reserve cryptocurrency for the internet is Bitcoin. And and that's why I think things happen. And it's like, you know, stock market crashes too. It does. Yeah. You know, Wall Street crashes too. Mm-hmm. But you know why you know, Ford Water Company crashes. I mean, Chevy, all kinds of times. There's all kinds of big corporations that crash, right? But they don't crash as bad. Why? It's out. They get bailed out. We had a we had a pandemic. Everyone literally panic people were thinking it was going to be doomsday everything started crashing how bad would they have crashed if the government would have actually not diluted the market and bailed it out right true so our government printed or created eight trillion dollars during the pandemic that's almost 40 percent of all the u.s dollars that have ever existed and then people wonder why we're dealing with so much inflation. I went through this the other day with a client, um, and he was telling me, I can't call him that, it's more like a friend, but I was going over some things that we were calculating. Three years ago, what you bought and what you spent to live, your normal your normal expenses every month, what were they this much? Okay, what are they now? 
this much. Guess what the increase was? 40%. Exactly the amount of money that was created. Jerome Powell literally says, we don't print the money anymore. It's all digital. So go, going back to the first question, what is cryptocurrency? It's a currency that's digital that's been cryptographically programmed to do certain things. What is the US dollar? It's a digital currency that's programmed to be continually, continually printed or created. That's why we're always behind. That's why people who know money get out of the dollar and put it into something that goes up in value. Because if you have dollars in your savings account, a hundred dollars, like I think about kids. I used to coach and I love kids. I love, I love kids. They want to get ahead of life. They want to save their money. If you worked and you saved a thousand dollars three years ago, you still have a thousand dollars in your bank today. But that thousand dollars only buys six hundred dollars worth of goods. That's really sad. Like that makes me feel really bad. It that I think that's why people are looking into crypto so much because it holds its value, even if it goes up and down, like Bitcoin has. It goes up and down like that because nobody bails it out. And guess what? It's still here. Yeah. True. And you know what? This year it's up 130%. And we're going to start the next bull market that have the Bitcoin having will be um, probably the end of March or the first part of April. And that will be a supply shock where the amount of Bitcoin coming into circulation is going to get cut in half. When do, we, when do they ever cut the amount of dollars coming into circulation in half? If they literally went, if the government went back and said, you know what, we overprinted $8 trillion. We're going to take it back and delete it. Guess what? We're going to go get 40% richer overnight it's like coffee if we all drink coffee in the morning and you have your coffee i have my coffee you like it dark i like it cream you have it strong i'm li but the government has their coffee and they drink it all and it's all gone and then they're like hey guys the central bank's gonna print some money here so we're gonna we're gonna stimulate the economy but what they're really doing is they're coming over and they're taking some of your coffee pouring it in their cup some of hers some of his some of mine pouring it in a cup and then we start noticing that our cup has less coffee, but what does they do? They just come in out of water. They diluted our monetary purchasing power. I, I actually, it was interesting because it was three years ago, three, four years ago, three years ago, where I had, I was actually worried about inflation with the, you know, and it's funny because I had to stimulate, I had to, uh, I furnished a house at the time. Uh -huh. And I remember I didn't have the floors done, but I remember I went and I bought it. Before, Before things smart. So, because I was like, mm -hmm. but yeah, that was really smart. Because so, as a farmer, mm -hmm. like our costs to produce, just for for example, for growing chili, our cost to produce chili has gone up by like four hundred percent. It's ridiculous. Is like we're feeding, we're feeding the people, you know, yeah. and and we're we're not doing well. We're we're going broke. Now, let me ask you this, because I know you're, you're into both. Now, really quickly, where can, as we wrap it up, where can people go to find more information about crypto? Like, if, you know, because you, you said you've learned a lot about it. So where can uh, people go to learn more? So some of the places that I've learned cryptocurrency from are some books. Uh, two books that I would recommend. One of them is called The Fiat Standard. And the other book is called The Bitcoin Standard. And they're written by a guy named Saifedean Amos. You can Google him. Just type in the book and you'll find it. The book, the Fiat Standard, Bitcoin Standard. On the internet, if you really want to learn about cryptocurrency, a lot of people that I like to listen to are uh, just YouTube, Michael Saylor. Okay. Michael Saylor, he explains it in ways that you will be like, the light bulb's gone, you know? Uh, Anthony Pompliano, he's another great one to listen to. He, I've learned a lot from him. And some of the other ones are probably way too deep for now, I right. think people, if they start getting into that, they'll find, if you want to go down the rabbit hole, you'll find the rabbit hole. So start off with those. Start off with those. Okay. okay yes. Good. Well, JJ, thank you for having hey, me on. No problem. I'll have you on again and learn more about, talk some more crypto. Thanks for having me. It's been really fun. If you enjoyed this conversation, make sure to comment, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can check out our past archive of episodes on kfoxtv.com or listen on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much for breaking it down with me and we'll see you next time here on The Breakdown.